all right, the project is starting to look a lot more like a scene instead of just a prop of a column because we've got the array of columns now. We sort of filled the room and we gave a floor to it and then put this trench in here where we're going to add some stairs and then we'll add the stairs in the background as well. Now, in terms of stairs, there's a couple of ways to create stairs now in Blender that just even the last few versions. So definitely use the latest version. It's just a free download. You might as well be using the latest. And there's been a lot of really neat additions uh, that make things go a lot smoother, like the trick I'm going to show you next about how to create stairs that you won't find in a version of Blender that's like a year or two old. Um, there's a couple of different ways to make stairs. Let me just turn on this little demonstration that I created in here. We're not going to make these. I just wanted to show you the, one of the other ways of making stairs. And that is by creating one. This is just the default cube. I squished it down. I put a couple of edge loops in here and I made this little nosing. And then I've created this set of steps here by adding an array. So if I select these and I go over to the array modify over here, you can see that I've made a relative offset in both the Y and the Z. So it's not only moving in the Y direction, one unit's width, but it's also going up one unit's width. So you don't even need to know the size of this cube here. You can just sort of eyeball it, make it look right, and then just use the one and one over here. The one little trick that I've done there is because of the nosing, you see I have to add this little flap down here at the bottom here. Otherwise, it'll take that one one unit um, to the distance of the nosing and there'll be a little gap in your stairs there, um, but that's easily fixed as well. But now I have the ability to just change the count number all that I want. I can sort of scrub up and down and make as many. There's 120 stairs there going way off into, into space there. It's super easy, just kind of a, a wiggle of the mouse and I've got what I need. So let me drop that down to four over here and get a little bit more sensible. And then this, so this is a really good way to do that because you can get all kinds of detail in your stairs if you want them to sort of be a special shape. You can even add a add a segment of handrail in here. So if you make one little baluster and one little bit of the handrail that then gets cloned, you can create a stair with a handrail quite easily. So this is a really good way. It's sort of the old way of doing it, but it's also a really good way of doing it because there's a lot of power. But I'm going to show you another way to do this that is very fast and fun. And we're going to do that by making sure we're in the object mode. So hit that tab key and get out of the object mode if you're in either the floor or in the, uh, the columns because we're going to want to be able to move our stairs around a little bit. We move the cursor to to world origin, and that's where we're going to have the cube that we're going to create appear. So I'm going to say Shift A to add a mesh. I'm going to add a cube. The companion cube in three, two, one. There's the box there, and I'm going to just just to be tidy here, because since I know how big it is right now, I'm going to go ahead and say G and Z and one and enter. And the only reason why I'm doing it now is I know that I've got the bottom of this sitting on the floor, and that'll just save me some steps later on. So you can see I've got it actually moved up to the level of the floor. And we're not going to shrink it down. We're going to use the default cubes, you know, two meter size right now to create our staircase. So the way we're going to do this is to hit that tab key and jump into the edit mode of our cube here. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in the uh, edge mode there. So I'm going to hit the two key to get to the edge mode or click on the button. And then I'm going to click on this edge right over there. And that's going to highlight just that edge while it deselects everything else. So we can hit the bevel command now, control B to make a bevel, and then I'm going to go ahead and push that over a little bit. And what I want to do is kind of keep an eye on the top and bottom. You might be getting like the fours, you know, depending on whether or not you restarted or not, you might have four segments on this, which is the last thing we did when we beveled part of our column on that. doesn't matter as long as it, you know, as it looks something like this because we're going to make a lot of changes right down here in this little menu. And if that little menu is closed, remember you just click on that tiny little arrow there to open up that menu. So we're going to make some changes up in here in a second, but what we want to do is come down here to this little button. This little button that says custom on there. It says super ellipse right now, and we're going to do custom. And this is the new uh, feature that has been added. And you see in these presets over here, we can, when we select custom, there are some presets, one of which is steps. So it might just say default for now. And then there's some other ones that are really neat to use. We could use some of those later, but right now we're going to say steps on that and it's going to create this little pattern, but we're not seeing any change in the face of our bevel because just like if we were trying to do a rounded, a normal bevel over here, we don't have, we haven't given it enough segments right now. It's just one segment. So we've got to change this to 16. So this is just trial and error that you get the maximum number of steps by just typing in 16. Now, if you don't immediately see this, you might see some sort of strange other version, like it's a bunch of steps st tacked over here. The best thing to do to fix that is just to come down here and select preset and come on preset and steps. There we go again. Um, and that should just do it. If, if when you make changes up in here and you don't see them reflected here, or it looks really weird, just pick steps out of the list again. And that usually will solve the problem. Um, that's pretty much all we need to do now. So we've just created this little staircase here just by using that bevel modifier. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on a blank spot in the screen there because we have kind of Aztec pyramid steps right now. These are really steep. They're steeper than they, they really, you know, those, those are too steep. We can fix it very quickly. I'm just going to hit the A key and select everything. That's A hitting A does uh, select all, so it's all the way around. And we're going to scale this, but we're only going to scale it in one direction. And we can tell it to, to scale in just one or eliminate just one direction very easily. So I'm going to hit the S key to scale. And look, there's that green line down in the, there on the floor. We know that the red axis is the X axis and the green axis is the Y axis and the blue axis is up and down. That's the Z axis going up in the air. Well, that green axis tells us which way we need to go. So we've typed in S to scale. And now if I type in Y, you see there's another little green line appears there. And that's telling us that we're locked into just that direction. So now all I need to do is just move my mouse just about there. That looks pretty good. Maybe the equivalent of three grid squares there. I can't quite see all the grid, but that looks about right. Again, you're sort of eyeballing it to where, you know, you want that sort of ratio of that sort of I don't know, rising eight, running 10, running 12, you know, that kind of stare looks a little bit more walk onable than before that. Now I'm all good to go. I can hit the tab key and I'm going to make three copies of this. And we're going to use the shift D command. I'm going to say shift D and then I'm going to hit enter. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm just going to use the move arrows to push out the copies. I'm just doing that. You don't have to do that. But that'll save us some steps later on because by doing it that way, we don't have to worry about putting it back on the floor again here. So I'm just going to say shift D and click there and push down another. So these two over here will be our stairs going up in the distance here. And this one we can now drag over and push down here until it goes into the little trench. Now feel free to use things like the one key on your number pad if you have a full-size number pad to look at it from the front view or click on the compass shapes over there. I might even click on the Z right now to look at the top view. I'm going to scooch over so I can see what I'm doing. Remember you can hit the Z key just by itself and that gives you the little pop-up menu. So maybe something like wireframe will allow me to see there's that loop cut that we added in the last video here so we know our trench is going up to right about there because we can see it right there. I'm going to grab the green arrow here and I'm just going to push the stairs up until they are touching roughly that that um, loop cut and it's probably our stairs are probably going to be a little too small for us there let me zoom in here uh, in the front view I'm just going to push that down to where the top of the stairs there is about the same height as our trench uh, as the, you know, the edge of the trench is about as high as the top of the stairs. I mean, it's a little too steep. Maybe more, eh, I don't know. You could play this game all day long. It is a little too narrow. So I'm going to hit S. And in this case, that X axis there. X marks the spot. There is the one that I want to just stretch it a little bit. And it's okay that it's overlapping a little bit. We're not putting this in a game engine or anything. This is just for a rendering. So having a little bit of overlap, you know, planes just poking through each other like that, that's fine. That's all we really need to do. Now I'm going to hit the Z key again and just go back to the solid view, or I can just click this little button back over here, hold down my middle mouse button and just drag into the perspective view and say, yeah, that looks pretty good. And I thought we were done with the floor, but we want to just double check. My floor is actually looking pretty good here, but you can always hit the tab key and hit the three key to grab a face and then just use the handles here. If your stairs are getting, you know, if your trench is very shallow and you're only seeing a few of the steps, well, you can push it down until you get to that bottom step. Or if your trench is very deep, you know, just the reverse of that, just move that face up until it matches there with the bottom of the step. And that looks pretty good to me. So we've got our stairs going down into our lower dungeon level over here. And now we're going to come over and mess with the stairs on this end. So I'm I'm going to hit the seven key on my number pad and where you can always use the tilde key and go to top view or click the blue uh, circle on the compass to get into these top views here. So I'm going to go and hit the uh, tab key to exit out of my floor again. And I'm going to grab these two here. So these two staircases, and I'm just going to put them up in this neighborhood over here. We're just going to kind of rough them in right now. This one is in on the floor, but it's facing the wrong way. So I'm going to grab this one. Now we could, I just moved out of top view, um, but I could have just rotated right there in the top view and not had it to do this extra step. But if you are in the perspective view, you can hit R. And in this case, we want to type in uh, Z and then 90, and that's going to turn it around the right direction. And I'm going to hit the enter key to hit enter. And the reason why we hit the Z in the middle there is because we're looking at it in perspective view. We hadn't done that here. I'll just show you what it does. R90, it sort of tumbles it, you know, relative to the camera view instead of to what we want in the space. So I'm going to undo it. i got to tell it that I'm happy with that and then undo it because I'm not happy with that and hit R and Z and 90. And that just locked it to that Z axis, just like when we were scaling a moment ago, same principle. So I'm going to take the stairs now here and I see if I reach over and grab that green arrow so I can just slide it over and I think 
think is it that one? I can always move it around later. Uh, again, all this stuff is so easy to fix, to move around. Oh, I do want to push it further into the scene there. So I'm going to grab the, oh, I grabbed the blue arrow by accident. Let me get a better view here so I can grab the red arrow and just move it in somewhere around in this area. But we're going to come in and prune all of these columns later on. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that uh, view there. I know this stair is roughly where it wants to be. And I want to put this one so that we go up the stairs to a landing and then it turns 90 degrees and we go further up this way. So this stair is all set. It's just too low. But now is a great opportunity for me just to hide my arches. So I'm over here in the outliner. I'm just going to close the eyeball there so I can still see the floor and other things in the scene. But I've gotten my arches out of the way so they're not, you know, getting in the way of my orbiting around in the scene. And again, I'm just going to come in here and just use the move arrows to get this in roughly the right area. It's it'll This will be easier if we're kind of close to what we want when we use the snapping. So I've got the snapping up here. Remember, we've got the vertex mode turned on and move, rotate, and scale. We're just going to use move right now, which should be on by default, but make sure you're in the vertex snapping. And remember the way to turn that on temporarily is to hold down the control or the command button as you move something. So I've got this selected. I put my cursor right down here next to this corner and I'm gonna hit the G key to grab to move. Uh, and I'm gonna hold down the control or the command button. And I'm just gonna come over here and snap to that corner right over there. We see the orange uh, snapping just like we did when we were snapping on our base a while back. So I'm gonna click when I've got there and now I've got that staircase in exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna orbit around over here and I'm actually gonna switch into the other staircase and I'm gonna hit the tab key grabbing this face, I'm in face mode, and I'm gonna do that exact same trick. I'm just gonna hit E to extrude and pull out a face, holding down that control key, lets me snap right to that corner. And then I'm gonna lift up on the control or command key and I've just extruded that landing. And then I can come in, I can, you can either do this, you can grab this face and go uh, extrude in this direction and snap to that corner, or there's you know reasons why it might be easier to go into this one and pull that down. Either way, it doesn't really matter. But what we are gonna do, actually it does matter, I'm gonna undo that because it's better to do it the other way for this very next step here. You never think these things through. So I'm gonna hit the tab key, grabbing this one, and then I'm gonna scooch into where I can see this face here. Uh, I'm gonna select uh, tab to get into this edit mode, grabbing this face, and then I'm gonna extrude down, holding the snapping to snap to that little corner there. And the reason why I did that is now I can grab both of these faces and extrude this edge out. Um, we would have had to have done that twice, two separate objects that way. Now this is this whole upper level is all one object instead of dragging that one down. So it doesn't really, really matter, but that just makes it a little bit easier in the long run. So now we have this big monumental staircase going on up into the distance. I'm going to turn the, the arches back on, scooch into the roughly where the ca camera is going to be. It's going to be sort of in this neighborhood. In the next video, that's going to do it for this video, but in the next video, we're going to come in here and mess with our view. We're going to set up our camera and we're going to break out some of these columns here so we can start creating that final view. <laughs>